UML stands for Unified Modeling Language and we're currently on version 2. What I'm going to show you here is something called the collaboration diagram that comes from version 1 of UML. This has been replaced in version 2 by a communication diagram. However, I actually believe that a collaboration diagram is far better to model how objects communicate within a Visual Basic program. Consequently, I'll be illustrating a collaboration diagram as another means of us trying to understand how objects communicate with one another when a computer program actually executes. Let's look at the component parts that make up a collaboration diagram. Firstly, what we can see here is we have a rectangular box and inside the box we have the word class A. Now this simply represents a class. So if we wish to refer to a class in the collaboration diagram, this is how we would actually do it. We would have a rectangular box with the word class A in it or whatever the name of the class happened to be. So the text there simply is saying a rectangle containing the name of a class represents a class. Now the thing is Visual Basic allows you to use a class directly and I don't think that's a good idea because it kind of goes against object orientation. However, because it does allow it, I think this is a useful component to have, something that represents a class. But you will see that I won't use this very often at all, if at all, when I actually write my designs out before I code. Here we've got a rectangle again, but this time we have class A and a colon, and all of it has been underlined. Now what this represents, if we were to see this in a collaboration diagram, would be an instance of class A, in other words an object. But this is a particular kind of instance. This is an object that doesn't have a name. Now we've really seen this already. When you start a Windows form application in Visual Basic, you get the first form by default when you run the program. And we don't know what the name of that is. We weren't responsible for giving it a name. So this is useful for those types of occasions. So if we look at the text associated with this, it says a rectangle containing the name of a class, a colon, as we can see, and is all underlined, well that represents an unnamed instance of the named class that we see before us. In other words, this is an object of class A that we don't know the name of. If we have a look at this one here, this again is a rectangle, and inside we have the text, class A again, there we can see the colon, and before the colon we can see it says object name, and all of it's underlined. Now this is an instance of class A that has the name object name, and therefore we can look at the text for this one, and it says a rectangle containing the name of a class, the name of the object either side of a colon, and is all underlined, then that represents a named instance of the class we can see before us. So this is a named instance of class A. This here is something that allows us to write some notes about a collaboration diagram that we have drawn. So in other words, it's just like a comment in a program. I can put some text in this area and that's quite handy if I want to convey something to my fellow colleagues when we're designing a particular program. So we can see here this shape represents a way of commenting on a diagram and it's quite simply referred to as a note. If we look at them all side by side, we can see the first one here represents a class. This one represents an unnamed instance of the class, i.e. an object, an unnamed object. This one here represents a named instance of the class, i.e. a named object. And this one is where we can put notes about any diagrams that I wish to draw. A collaboration diagram allows a programmer and designers to actually work out how objects are going to talk to each other when the program is actually executing. And the key is before we actually start writing our code. So a collaboration diagram allows us to look at objects as if they were in an execution space, talking to each other, passing in messages before I sit down at a keyboard and type any code in. And that's key to understanding why we have collaboration diagram. In this particular playlist, what I'll be showing you is how to read collaboration diagrams and I'll be drawing reference to code we've already seen. And once we know how to read them, then we can start designing with them.
How we design won't appear in this particular playlist, but I think it is important that we're able to refer to collaboration diagrams and code and relate them to one another. And what I can stress that when you write large systems, it is important to give great consideration to how objects talk to each other. And a collaboration diagram, and to be fair, the new communication diagram allows you to do this, just that I have a preference for a collaboration diagram. And it's highly likely that the ones we'll be using are these two here. This one which is the unnamed instance of class A, and this one which is the name instance of class A. Instead of thinking of execution spaces, I can now think about objects messaging each other using a collaboration diagram. So I'm going to start off by saying that I have an object come into existence. And this object here is an instance of class A. Now I can tell that because to the right of the colon it says class A and it's underlined which tells me it's an instance, i.e. it's an object, but I don't know its name. So this is an unnamed instance of class A. Now let's say within this instance there is some code that's capable of producing another object and this is the other object here. Now this is an instance of class B, how do I know that? Because I look at the colon and to the right of the colon as I look at it it says class B, the whole lot's underlined. And to the left of the colon, we've got the name of the actual object itself, which I've simply called object name. The instance of class A produce this instance of class B. Consequently, we have what's called a line of visibility between them, as you can see here. Or the instance of class A was responsible for producing the instance of class B. And I can now send a message between them. So I would show a message simply as this, with the name of the message, and an arrow showing the direction in which the message went. So here I'm quite clear that I'm thinking of a program that has an object, which is an instance of class A in this case, creates an instance of class B, and then sends a message to the instance of class B. So I'm beginning to look at how objects communicate using a collaboration diagram, and I haven't started writing any code yet. 